Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I wanted to do a video on the Apollo Twin X Duo and I've been using this interface for about two years now and I really love it. What I'm going to do is run through the buttons on the hardware and then I'm going to go into console, which is their interface for sort of tracking vocals and seeing the signals coming in and show you how I use it. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run through this preamp from left to right and show you the buttons and what they mean. Okay, so this preamp button right here is going to switch between your first and your second channel or your microphones. And you can see right here, this is the preamp gain. I like mine where it's at right now, so I'm going to leave it there. But that would change the signal coming in. You can have a higher input or you can have a lower input. I wouldn't go too high, above negative 6 maybe coming in. And I wouldn't go too low, below negative 18 because then you're working backwards. If you have to bring it up too much, then you're gonna introduce noise, or if it's too loud, you're working backwards and you can't really help something that's already distorted. The second button right here is the input. This is gonna switch between our channels or the high Z input right here. And what this is, is for an electric guitar, a bass or an acoustic electric, and that way you can record straight into Logic. This button right here is a roll off. It'll roll off the low end, and that way if you're tracking a vocal, you have to do less EQing in post, which saves you a lot of time actually. It just cleans it all up really nicely. The plus 48 volts right here is your phantom power. This is what powers the microphone. With most condenser microphones, dynamic microphones, whatever, you're gonna need phantom power, so this is very important to have that on. The pad is really cool because what that does, if you have a really loud signal, it's going to knock it down 20 dB and you can work from there. This button right here is actually going to flip the polarity, which is very helpful if you have two microphones recording the same instrument or a vocal. If you have two microphones maybe too close together or on top of each other, they can pretty much phase out and they cancel each other out. So this is a really cool button. This link button pretty much links channel one and channel two. And then you go to monitor, and this is going to introduce some other buttons right here. So monitor is exactly what you think it would be. It's to monitor. So if you have monitors, which I have Yamaha HS7s, and that's how you pretty much control what you're hearing through the monitors or the headphones. Either way. You have a headphone jack right here. This is a quarter inch jack, so make sure you do have a quarter inch converter if you do not have the proper jack coming in. This button right here is the talkback mic, which pretty much allows you, for me, what I do with it is just take notes. Um, again, I rarely use this because a lot of stuff that I do is on voice notes in my phone, but it is a cool feature to have. Dim is sort of similar to like a pad, in the, but it's like a pad for your monitor, essentially. It's going to knock down or attenuate the sound of what you're hearing on your monitors. Mono, this is very, very helpful. You hear everything back in mono. So when you're mixing, you know, a lot of times like 80% of the mix is done in mono, and then you flip it back to stereo to hear it afterwards. So you can flip this right to mono and mix right away. So it, it really cuts back a lot of the time. The mute button here is going to mute your monitors, very straightforward. Now when you hit monitor, this does not change your channels anymore. It changes your monitor, the signal that you're hearing from your monitors. These are what I was talking about in the beginning. This is just your two channels. I usually have two mics running at a time if I'm recording an instrument or a vocal take and an acoustic guitar or something like that. Very straightforward, you plug it in and then you switch back to the front like I was saying with the channels and you can change the signal coming in. These right here are for the monitors. I have these hooked up to, as I said, Yamaha HS7s. Just make sure that you have the left with the left and the right with the right, otherwise you're gonna be very confused at where the sound's coming from and it's gonna screw you up mixing and you know all sorts of stuff like that. You also have a couple line outs here. This is the Thunderbolt 3 cable which is a lot faster than previous ones, which I really like. This is the cable here that powers the interface and then it plugs in to the wall or a power strip. Optical in, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no clue what that is, I've never used it before. And this here just powers on and off the interface. So that's pretty much it for the front and back. It's actually a lot easier than you'd think it is. All right, guys, so now I have console pulled up, which is essentially Universal Audio's way of recording vocals and monitoring what's coming in. You have so many things that you can do within here, but first I'm going to show you what I already showed you just within console itself. 
So again, here you have channel one, you have channel two, these are your microphones. Right now we're gonna focus on channel one. I have this disengaged, but I will enable it in a second. This is the Avalon, this is a preamp. But let me show you this, right? You have your 48 volts, this is the phantom power, which powers the microphone. You have the roll off, polarity, a pad. So pretty much all the same things on the hardware, but within console. You also have down here some sends, so you can add inserts over here, and then you can change the signal coming in, as you can see right there. And that's really helpful with tracking vocals with stuff like delays and reverbs. That's usually what I use it for. So now let me switch this Avalon on. This is a preamp that you would have to buy separately, but I bought them because I think it's worth it because, you know, it's... It's expensive, but at the same time, if you really have an appreciation for like analog sound and analog gear, then to me, it's really worth it because the stuff is really expensive as hardware. So I'd rather just spend the money on the plugins and be able to do everything within my computer. Okay, so now we have the Avalon on and you can hear the sound change quite a bit. And I can actually go right in here boost the highs, you can get kind of a shimmery top end, which you can hear it changing as I'm doing that. You can roll off some of the, the lows. You can just adjust this accordingly. You can change the output, the input, you have compression controls right in here. And now this is where UAD record versus monitor comes in handy. So now you have UAD record versus UAD monitor. What does that mean? Essentially, it means that what you're hearing now with the Avalon, you have the option to either record in or monitor. If you go up here, you have some compression happening if I were, were to click this on. And if I'm not too confident about tracking vocals with compression on, and I think that I want to do more in post, then it's probably pretty beneficial to do it after the fact. And that's when you would switch it to monitor as opposed to record. For the sake of this, I'm going to record because I'm recording it right now. I want you guys to be able to hear me in real time. Let me show you the sends because this is kind of the magic of all this and the zero latency. So let's go down here to a reverb and let's put on the dream verb, which is my favorite. We're going to put it to 100%. And then as you go up here, you can hear my voice have a little reverb and there's zero latency. You can hear it. You know, it's very nice to track vocals that way so that you can have a little bit of space on your voice. It can really help to get a good, clean vocal take. Again, the sends will not be recorded in even if you had UAD record on, which is very nice. Now over here, this is the output. You can flip it to mono. So when you're mixing, you can mix in mono or you can mute the output. So if you had monitors, you wouldn't hear the monitors, which is very helpful if you're recording. Obviously, you don't want to record while your monitors are on in a home studio setup. Now, I usually just keep it on overview, but you can switch to the inputs and it's no different than what's being displayed up here. It's just larger. Same thing with the inserts, same thing with the sends. This is where you would pretty much add the sends and you can add inserts. The difference between adding an insert and adding it up here is this is the Unison technology. This is actually changing it. When you see this orange up here, that is how you know that you're hearing the sound of this particular preamp. And you can change that to whatever preamp you want. But as an insert, it's an insert. It's not the same. You, you are hearing it, but it's not actually changing the preamp itself with the hardware. Other than that, I'm just showing you guys what I use it for. There are a lot of other parameters, but I am not really messing with those all that much. And I've been using this for two years. This is the basics of console and how to use it and how to use the hardware too. So now what I'm going to do is play some guitar and I'm going to sing a little bit. And that way you guys can get a feel for what the preamp sounds like dry. And if I add the Avalon. Said you found the one that's right and he acts real nice. Probably just lying. He's probably just lying. Said you found the one that's new and he acts real cool. He's probably just lying. He's probably just lying. Said you found the one that's right and he treats you nice. He's probably just lying. Probably just lying 
Said you found the one that's new and he acts real cool He's probably just lying He's probably just lying